In this section, we'll talk about tools, picking the right site, and how to plant trees. First, we'll go over the different tools we use on planting day. Then we'll learn about right tree, right place guidelines that help us decide where we can and can't plant. Finally, we'll talk about the different types of tree stock we'll be planting. Hello there, my name is Mario. I use he, him pronouns. And today we're gonna to be talking about the tools and how we use them safely on planting day. You wanna grab a pair of gloves before heading out on planting day. Uh, Friends of Trees washes and sanitizes gloves before and after every time we use them. I usually like to grab a second pair of gloves just in case they get wet or uh, muddy on planting day. Um, but the tool we'll be using the most is the spade shovel. The spade shovel um, comes to a point and it's a lot sharper than a lot of the other shovels that we use. And we use these to deepen and enlarge in the holes for the trees. <clears throat> Here we have the flat shovel. We don't use these as, as often, but we use these to scoop the dirt off of the sidewalk after we plant. When uh, using the shovel, make sure to practice tool safety. That means not putting it over your shoulder, uh, putting the sharp side down, and when you're done using the shovel, make sure to place it face down so nobody trips on it. Hi, my name's Christine, and I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a neighborhood tree specialist. I'm gonna show you a few tools today. The first tool is our hard rake. I use the hard rake to move soil and mulch while planting. The next tool is the spring rake or leaf rake. I use this one to move smaller sticks and dirt and such to really tidy the area while planting. The push broom is especially great when planting street trees because you use this broom to push dirt, mulch, anything else that might be on the sidewalk or driveways while you're planting. Of course, another tool you'll get is a set of pruning shears. Not so much for pruning the tree, but to remove items like plastic ties, dead branches, and anything extra that might come attached to the tree from the nursery. Another super helpful tool is the cultivator claw. The cultivator claw you'll use especially when planting container trees, which we'll go more in depth about later. Those container trees often come with circling roots bound around them that can be really stubborn. So you can use this tool to loosen those roots and it just makes it a breeze. Hi, my name is Jillian and I'm a neighborhood tree specialist and I'm here to talk about the rest of the tools we'll be using on planting day. So we have our stake pounder. It's really heavy and made of steel and we use this to uh, put in the stakes after we plant the tree. We also make sure that we use our hard hat and we secure it in the back to make sure it doesn't fall off our heads. If you see anybody on your team using the stake pounder without a hard hat, make sure you ask them to put on the hard hat because emergency room visits have happened. Lastly, we have our stakes. These are wooden stakes and we use two for each tree. We encourage y'all to bring extras just in case if they break. When using the stake pounder, you might need a friend to help you hold on to the stake. And I'll wait for my friend to leave before I start using it. And if I can't pull it out with one hand, then it's in deep enough. The last thing we'll be doing is using this twine to help secure the tree to the stakes. We'll start by getting the twine about even and tying a knot with about three fingers distance between the tree and the knot. And then we'll just tie it off on each side of the stakes. And now that the tree is secure, 
The last thing we need to do is fill up our water bucket and give five gallons of water to the tree. We usually use the tree recipient's uh, water spigot to fill up this bucket and then water in the tree. Now that we learned a bit more about the tools we'll be using on planting day, let's review. It's important to show tool safety when out in the field with your crew. This means placing shovels and hard rakes face down so that if they get stepped on, they do not bounce up and hit you or a crew member. Never carry tools over your shoulder. Instead, carry them down and away from you. Smaller tools like pruners and the cultivator claw can be carried in the five gallon bucket between planting sites. Make sure when a shovel is digging, your hands are out of the way. We want to make sure you go home with all your fingers. And lastly, always remember to use a hard hat when using the stake pounder. Now let's talk about site and tree selection. Right tree. The first thing we consider is how big the planting site is. Are we planting a tree in a backyard, in a wide planting strip, or in a narrow planting strip? We have lists of trees appropriate for all of these spaces. Different spaces can accommodate different sizes and types of trees. If a planting strip is narrow, it doesn't mean that we can't plant a tree there. It just means that we need to choose from a list of smaller trees that have less aggressive root systems. Sometimes when I'm out planting trees, I get questions from neighbors about why we're planting trees under a power line. Won't you just have to cut it back in a few years? It's important to remember that not all overhead wires pose a conflict with trees. Some, like cable and telephone wires, are okay to come into contact with tree limbs, but some power lines, like high voltage, limit the size of tree below. In that case, we just plant a tree from the list of approved smaller trees from that municipality. Plant a tree. There are some places where we can't plant a tree of any size. This is why we have setbacks from important infrastructure. We don't want to plant right above a gas line, in front of a stop sign, or too close to an intersection. That would create a hazard. We need to make sure we leave enough room for underground utilities and other urban infrastructure. Each city has a long list of predetermined setbacks to help us find an ideal planting location. If you're thinking, how will I know where to plant? I can't memorize that long list of setbacks. Don't worry. The city inspectors and Friends of Trees staff figure this stuff out for you ahead of time and spray paint a white line on the curb or street indicating where the tree can go. Each Friends of Trees street tree planting site has been pre-inspected. That's why we only plant at the white marks. If there's any confusion or something seems off, you can always call your Friends of Trees planting coordinator. Most holes for trees have been pre-dug but sometimes they're not, and you'll have to dig the hole from start to finish. Look out for utility markings when doing this, spray paint or flags on the grass. See scribbled spray paint writing? Usually it says no. Don't worry about that. That just means there is no utility there and you could still plant there. Utility locations for all trees, marking water, gas, and electric lines have been requested a week before planting day. If you need a refresher, the utility key is on the back of your crew leader clipboards for reference. For planting trees in yards, these locations should be marked with a white flag indicating where the tree will be planted. These locations don't require city inspections and are chosen by the tree recipient. That being said, make sure to keep an eye out for utility locate paint and make sure to not plant a tree within five feet of those lines. Additionally, we recommend 15 feet from houses, five feet from pavement, and 20 feet from other trees. If you're unsure of a planting location for any reason, call your Friends of Trees planting coordinator. Their contact will be on your crew sheet. Let's dig in to tree planting techniques. When handling and transporting your tree, make sure to be very careful with its trunk. That's because young trees have very thin bark and the living tissues are close to its surface. Most of a tree's trunk is dead woody material called heartwood, which provides strength and structure to your tree, kind of like a skeleton. The active xylem cells called sapwood carry water and nutrients from the roots to its leaves, 
the phloem carries sugars from the leaves down to the rest of the tree. These tissues are very close to the surface, right under the bark, and an accidental swipe of a shovel, a bump from another tree container, or a close pass by a lawnmower can easily damage a young tree, harming these essential pathways for water, nutrients, and growth, and potentially exposing the tree to pathogens and other infections. Before planting your tree, look for the first major root under the soil, known as the root flare. That's how deep you want to plant your tree. A common issue we see with trees is that many are planted too deep. When the trunk tissue is buried, it makes it more susceptible to rot, decay, and disease. Make sure that the trunk's tapered flare is visible and not like a telephone pole straight into the ground with no visible flare. When digging, make sure to dig the hole twice the size of the root ball and score the sides of the hole. This loosens the soil around the root zone and makes it easier for roots to grow into the surrounding soil. The trees we plant are about six to 10 feet tall, tall enough to not get trampled in an urban environment. Next, we'll discuss these three kinds of stock and how to plant them. Each one is a little different and requires different techniques. A bald and burlap tree, also referred to as B&B, &B, is the most common type of rootstock we plant. A B&B &B tree is a tree that has been field grown from a seedling until it is big enough to plant. Each B&B &B tree is dug up during the dormant season, wrapped in burlap and tied with a rope to hold it together. When a tree is dug, a large number of its roots are removed, but these regrow quickly with ample watering for the first three to five summers. Planting a tree can be fun and easy if you know what you're doing. This video will guide you through the process. First, make sure all plastic tags are removed and any broken branches are pruned back to a node or branch junction. Carefully loosen the burlap and dig until you locate the top root or root flare. It can be deeper than you expect. Dig your hole as deep as the top root and twice as wide as the root ball. Keep grass on one side and soil on the other while digging to keep things tidy. We'll be using these later on. Check the planting depth by measuring the first major root against the hole depth using a stake or tool handle. Adjust the hole to align the top root with the surrounding soil level. Score the sides of the hole to make it easier for roots to penetrate. Remember, tree roots grow outwards, not down. Place the tree in the hole using the burlap. Remove any small wire baskets beforehand or cut it off if necessary. Carefully remove the burlap by rocking the tree gently to each side, tucking and pulling the burlap without damaging the root ball. Straighten the tree and support it with soil at the base compacting the soil around it gently. Finish by adding soil, breaking up large clumps, and gently filling the side of the hole with soil. Use remaining soil and grass to create a berm around the tree. This helps to retain water and keeps weeds at bay. Make a mulch donut around the tree and make sure to leave a few inches of space between the mulch and the tree trunk. We use wooden stakes for every tree at FOT to protect them from cars, lawnmowers, and to stabilize them against windstorms. Ensure the knot is loose to allow the tree flexibility to develop taper and root growth. Lastly, we add a sticker with maintenance instructions for homeowners and tree information for neighbors to learn about the new trees that are planted in the neighborhood. At Friends of Trees, we also plant container-grown trees. They're easier to move around and a bit lighter than B&B trees, which is a nice perk, but they come with a few common issues to watch out for, which we'll explain in this video. Before you start preparing the tree for planting, dig the hole where the white flag is marked. These flags should be labeled with species so you know which tree goes where. Most of the time, the holes are pre-dug to make planting day easier, but sometimes you'll need to dig the hole yourself. Just like with a B&B &B tree, Dig your hole as deep as the root flare and twice as wide as the root ball. As you dig, keep the grass on one side and the soil on the other to keep things tidy. We'll use these later. Once the hole is dug, use your spade shovel to score the sides. Tree roots grow outward, parallel to the ground, 
and within the first 18 inches of soil. Scoring the sides helps the roots penetrate the soil more easily. Getting containerized trees out of their pots can be a bit tricky, so use your knee or heel to press down on the sides of the pot to loosen it. Have one person pull the pot away while the other holds the base of the trunk. Once the tree is out, remove any tags, plastic, stakes, or anything else attached from the nursery, and make sure to dispose of them properly. Check for circling roots at the edges and bottom of the root ball, and roots growing inwards. Use a cultivator claw to loosen these roots, and you might even need to prune some of them off. If left unchecked, these roots can girdle the tree, limiting its nutrient intake and root growth. Don't worry about being too aggressive, you won't hurt the tree, but the more you loosen these stubborn roots, the better the tree will do in the long run. It might take a while, but just be patient and persistent. Next, remove any excess topsoil from the root ball to find the root flare. Sometimes it's buried pretty deep, so dig down until you find the first major root. This is very common with container trees, especially those that have been in containers their whole lives. Over time, nurseries add soil and mulch to the pot, encouraging adventitious roots to form. These can easily be mistaken for the root flare, but they aren't, so be careful. We recommend using your pruner to remove these adventitious roots above the root flare. You might also notice circling roots around the base of the trunk. It's okay to prune these off too. If left alone, they can limit nutrient intake, lead to an unstable structure, and weaken the tree over time. Once you get past the layers of soil and adventitious roots, you'll find the root flare, which should look like the thickest major root coming off of the tree. Be sure not to cut this one off. If you're unsure about identifying the root flare, there's an image on the back of your crew leader clipboard that shows you what to look for. Similar to BNB trees, use a stake to determine the hole depth and adjust accordingly with the level of the root flare. Carefully place the tree in the hole and position it so it's upright and oriented in the way you want it to grow. It's good practice to step back, walk around the tree, and make sure it's balanced and even in all directions. If it has a slight lean, don't worry, we can use stakes to correct it. Finally, gently backfill the hole with soil to avoid air pockets. No need to press the soil down around the root ball, we'll water the tree and at the end to remove any remaining air pockets. Use the extra soil and grass that you saved earlier to create a soil berm around the base of the tree. After that, put on your safety helmet and stake the tree just outside the hole you dug. Use the weight of the stake pounder and gravity to make the job easier, and let the tool do the work. Once the stakes are in, use twine to secure the tree, making sure to leave about a 3 inch loop between the trunk and the twine so the tree has room to adjust to its new home. Lastly, attach the tree tag so the tree's new owner knows how to take care of it, and so passerbys can learn what type of tree was planted here. The last step is to water the tree. Grab a bucket and fill it with five gallons of water from the tree recipient's water spigot and slowly water the tree. This will help the air pockets around the tree settle without compacting the soil. That was a lot of info, but don't worry, we'll go over these steps and techniques in person so you can get some more hands-on experience with this process. Bare root trees, available from February onward, are lightweight and grown in fields with roots exposed for transport. Handle bare root trees carefully, keeping roots moist until planting. Bare root trees will be transported with wet burlap from the staging area to their final planting site. Carefully unwrap the damp burlap from the tree's roots and determine how to position the tree in the pre-dug hole. Have one crew member hold the tree in place in the hole and fill the soil to the root flare of the tree. Compared to other types of tree stock, you will not have extra soil to fill in the hole. Try to use all the soil available to avoid planting the tree too deep. You may need to pull extra soil from other trees to plant a bare root stock tree. Similarly to ball and burlap trees, backfill gently to avoid air pockets and create a grass berm. Water thoroughly to get rid of any air pockets and stake the tree upright tying loosely to avoid damaging the bark. We look forward to seeing you at our in-person training and planting events. Thank you for your time and interest in this training.
We can't wait to plant with you soon.